All right, guys. So we got the Board of Truth out there at exactly 100 yards. We uh, verified that with several different methods, including tape here. And uh, we're doing a reticle test. We have eight mils drawn out on that board. At 100 yards, that comes out to be how much again, Jesse? 28.8 inches. 28.8. And we got that drawn out on the board. And we're looking at it with uh, several different reticles. Right now we're just playing with the spotting scope here, the Optlet. And we got a SWFA fixed 10, right? Fixed 12. No, it's a fixed 12 Super Sniper here. And we got the Steiner Military back here, which was on the line a second ago. That's the Military Series. What we're finding is that these things will vary a little bit. And that's just the reality of how most reticles are set up. You're gonna see uh, quite a bit of variance Sometimes like 0.1 uh, mils of, of, you know, being off at some of these distances or some of these different increments. And uh, one thing that we found out there, you can actually adjust the focal length on where your reticle is placed in this eyepiece. So this eyepiece is threaded onto the body. Uh, this is the main scope to body from the Optolith. And you can change out the eyepieces. You can do variable uh, power eyepieces or this fixed 30 power eyepiece with the mill scale reticle in it. So the reticle is in that eyepiece, and when you thread it on there, if you just thread it all the way in, go ahead, you're actually moving the reticle closer in, so you're changing the focal length, okay? Now anytime you move your focal length this way or this way, your reticle is going to shrink and grow a little bit, so you have to calibrate this properly. So idealistically, you would find the position, go ahead and uh, see, see if you can get it in the correct spot. So we're looking at the target. That yeah, we memorized where it was at. Quarters of a turn in to get it exactly on. Yeah. Okay, so you'll feel the thread start to engage. And we'll take it a three quarter of a turn to our little mark. Square up our reticle. So what we're doing is uh, we're turning the eyepiece in and out so that it's moving forward and in and out to uh, get that reticle centered right in the exact uh, focal length to where it's uh, scaled properly, to where it's matching up with the lines down there on the board. Okay exactly uh, eight mils apart. And what, uh, what you'll do eventually when you find the right sweet spot is there's a lock ring on here. You wanna show where that lock ring is? Sure. You hold the IP solid so that's not moving in, in and out. And then what you would theoretically do is lock down this lock ring until it bottoms out. Yeah. Now, unfortunately with this particular Sweet scope, um, you don't have quite enough adjustment on here. So that's sometimes you're gonna find that. So you might have to either put a spacer in here or turn it in enough to have enough thread engagement and put spacers in there or just kind of deal with the reticle being a little bit out of whack. But there is adjustment. If you have the eyepiece with the reticle in it, you can turn that in. And when you're unscrewing it, that actually adjusts your focal length. And you can do that to where you get it perfectly uh, centered is the idea how it works. Sometimes it's hard to execute mechanically to get exactly perfect. On the Super Sniper, what do we find out, man? We come up, uh, the reticle was one-tenth of a mil under. The, the, the 28.8 inches? Yep. So one tenth off there. The Steiner military was dead on. Like it, I couldn't ask any more of it. So like exactly perfect. Exactly perfect. So what you'd find if you had a whole different range, or if you had a whole different range of optics out here laid on on the hundred yard line, you're gonna find that there's basically like a lot of different uh, variances you're gonna get, and uh, not any one of them are gonna be exactly the same, and uh, it's gonna be a little hard to determine exactly which one you want to use as your baseline. Uh, idealistically, the stuff would be placed at exactly, uh, you know, like exactly mathematically correctly at 100 yards. Unfortunately, that's kind of a, if, if your spotting scope matches your rifle, like in the case of this Optolith right now, the way it's configured when you actually can lock it down, it does match the reticle on the uh, SWFA scope because they're both off the same amount, right? So you can use that and then you'd have to mathematically correct your ballistics in your software right and mind you uh the ranging capability at that point you can't really you have to change your numbers around a little bit yeah yeah and so you can't use a standard constants that you're used to um, likewise if you're spotting for someone else they might be using different equipment so just achieving mathematical precision with your reticle is not the end of the game because other guys stuff is going to be different each scope is going to measure a little differently and that's something we're talking about a second ago too in terms of like the reality of the industry. Like if you guys go and check your scopes, they like might not exactly be on with the reticle. 
So you can do a simple test like that and see where your reticle's at. And uh, we have a pretty good idea of where that generally is for sometimes different brands have general trends that you'll see, but all it takes is changing like one dimension inside the scope of your lens would either be a little bit farther in, a little bit farther out. Your focal length is different. And now your reticle that used to be perfect is off. And that's something that can happen from the factory that they won't even tell anyone about. And so that's something that requires just a field testing and evaluation continuously on whatever optic you get. Doesn't matter if they have good field reports, you want to verify it because stuff does eventually get off and uh, you need to know about it. It's not that you can't deal with it if it is off, you just need to know how off it is and in what direction so you can appropriately balance that out in your system. So when you're talking about uh, balancing your ballistic tools, uh, doing your scope tests and stuff like that, you got to think of can, can, uh, in a way to like all the stuff is all one big system together, right? Your spotting scope kind of has to be on the same page of your rifle. Your rifle and your spotting scope, preferably you should have the ballistics adjusted for whatever they're off by. And if the turrets on your rifle scope are different than the reticle, you need to know about that. Idealistically, everything should be dead zero. Uh, but when it comes to reticles, it's something that's very rarely checked. So do be careful with that.